Put a hand for that this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Also this week, we received a phone call from a lady wanting several copies of the Occult in America uh, printed material that we have that deals with Halloween and not just oh, Halloween, right. but far more than that. Amen. And she wants to put it in the foyer of their church to share it with the rest of their church members. So. Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. Just hope it don't get her expelled or cast out from her church. Yeah, well, yeah. well, that yeah. might be a good thing. Yeah, yeah that's true. Happen. That's true. Yeah, yeah. If that happens, it might be time to move on all yeah. anyway. Amen. Yeah, man. That's the truth. That. Amen. That is the truth. Hallelujah. All right. We're talking about the blood. We started last week on this and we're looking at Brother David, you were not able to be with us, but we're looking at pictures, types, and shadows okay. in the Old Testament that point toward the, the biggest, the most cataclysmic, well, that's a good word right there, isn't it? Oh. Event in the history of man. Right. Amen. Amen. I told you last week, I said again today, many people think, well, you know, Jesus ain't in the Old Testament. Oh, I beg to differ. Amen. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, you can find Jesus. Right. Amen. Because that's where God's Word points to. Yes, Amen. Right. We're learning that how from the beginning of man, Come on. God has always pointed to one source right. of justification and salvation. Mm -hmm. And that source would be in the form of the Lamb of God yeah. that would come and take away, as John said, on the sandy shores there when He was baptizing people Come on. in the Jordan River. Right. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God yeah. which takes away the sin of the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you imagine? John out there baptizing. No doubt he had seen people come and go. Amen. Yeah, he had saw people. He had looked up from where he was baptizing and saw people coming before but never before had he made this statement. Yeah. Oh hallelujah. Oh. Behold the Lamb of God yeah. which takes away the sin of the world. Oh. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. The and the, 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 the best way I know to put it today is that the blood is the foundation. Uh -huh. If you don't have that, you've missed it all. Right. If you build on anything else, Brother David, right. you, your work, that which you build is in vain. Amen? Amen. That's true. So we're looking at the Scriptures. And the Lord brought this passage by me this week and I thought I'd share it with you as we start. You see, it's not enough to know the Scriptures. Right. Amen. We do need to know the Scriptures. Yes. It's not enough to know the Scriptures, but we must know the Scriptures and know of whom the Scriptures testify. Right. Amen. Amen. The Pharisees knew the Scripture. Come on. The Sadducees knew the Scriptures. Yeah. But they didn't know the one that the Scriptures testified about. Right. Amen. Jesus would make this plain whenever he was saying, because see, they thought that knowing the Scriptures, mm -hmm. there was salvation in knowing the Scripture. Yeah, right. Knowing the Word. Mm -hmm. Knowing the Torah. Right. That salvation and justification and righteousness was found in that. Amen. And Jesus would make this statement to them. He said, search the Scriptures. Yeah. For in them, you think you have eternal life. Mom. Meaning that in knowing the Word, being able to, to uh, uh, memorize the Word, being able to recite the Word, mm. knowing the Word, having the, the Word instilled in you, the Torah, the Law, the different things. We know that, that Jesus, when He spoke to them of the Scriptures here, He was speaking of the writings of Moses and the prophets, mm. which is what we're looking at, amen, in this series. Mom. He says, you think that that's where your salvation is at, where your eternal life is at. Oh, it's in wow. knowing the Word. He tells them to search the Scriptures. Come on. He says, They are they which testify of Me. Come on. If you look below just the written Word, yeah. oh my, my, my. It's easy. I guess to, uh, they say that hindsight, Brother Sleece, is 20-20. Right. We can stand here today and we can look back and we scratch our head and say, How in the world did they not know that it was Jesus that the Scripture was talking about? Amen. Wow. How in the world could they know the Word so good, the Law so good, the Torah so good, yet miss 
The fact that it was speaking of the man that stood in front of them. Right, come on. Of course, that's still going on today. Amen. This ain't some right. ancient thing. There are people today, they, they, they veer off into the Hebrew roots of the Jewish roots movement till finally they don't even believe Jesus. Because that's where it takes them. Right. It takes them to the, 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 the side of, to which the, of the Jewish people that rejected Jesus as being yeah. a Messiah. Amen? Uh -huh. Still waiting on a Messiah. And some of them don't believe there is a Messiah at all. They put their hope in Israel. Yeah. Their hope is in God. But not the Son. Amen. Amen. You count on a broken stick this morning because the God already set God already set things up. Yeah. You have to come through the Son. Right. Amen. There is no other way. You have to come through the blood of the cross of Calvary or you do not go. Right. And Jesus said it's the scriptures, and he's talking about the Old Testament scriptures here. Mm -hmm. It's the scriptures that testify right. of me. Yeah. The layout of the tabernacle testifies. Mm -hmm. Of me. The water labor testifies of me. The brazen altar testifies of me. The law that Moses received on Mount Sinai testifies of me. Amen. All of the Word of God points to Jesus Christ as being the Redeemer, the promised one. Emmanuel, God with us, born of a virgin. God with us in the flesh. He says, "These are the, the scriptures are they which testify of me." So look again. Maybe that's what he was telling them. You know, you you know the Torah inside and out. You know the law inside and out. You've read the writings of Moses. You've read the writings of the prophets. You've read the scriptures. Go back and look again, and see if you don't see me within those writings, because it is they that testify of me. Amen. And we found this last week whenever we began this series, whenever we talked about uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden where they fell, they sinned, they rebelled against God's Word. Come on. And in doing so, they lost the righteousness that they were clothed in. Yeah. The glory of God that surrounded them. Come on. And the first thing they did, Brother Dave was try and cover up their nakedness with something that they made themselves. Man's still doing the same thing today. Amen. Trying to justify themselves with something man-made and it That's won't work. Right, it didn't work then, it don't work now. Amen. That's true. Man's works can never, the works of man's hands can never justify man. That's right, brother. We said last week, and as I was listening this week at the sermon as we that we recorded and I have to edit it and get it ready for radio and all of that mm. that you might feel justified uh. hanging with the boys of the church yeah you might feel like your works are enough to get you by mm. hanging with brother Sleese and brother dave you know mm. brother bill whoever you hang with yeah you might feel like that that's enough and you're doing good but when you stand in the presence of an almighty, all-holy God, you're going to find out that your works fade in comparison to His righteousness. You're going to find out that your deeds fade in comparison to His righteousness. You're going to find out that your work is nothing compared to His work. That's right, brother. Amen. And I got news for you today. You can reject it. Yeah. You cannot accept it. You can choose not to believe it, but it's the truth anyway. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There is but one way, and that's God's way. And if you don't take it, there is no way for you other than hell. Come on, brother. Amen? Come on. It'll be God's way or no way. Yeah. You ever heard somebody say it's my way or the highway? Yeah. Amen. It's God's way or you won't go. Yes, sir. You won't climb up no other way because if you do, you'll be the same as a thief and a robber. You won't get in after the door is shut because if you try to, you'll say, depart from me, workers of iniquity, because I do not know you. I know you not. Yeah. So we're talking about, and we looked at the picture there in the Garden of Eden, how that Adam and Eve took the fig leaves and they made themselves aprons. Yeah. And we saw how that God... Told them that ain't good enough All right. by his actions. The Bible says he clothed them with coats of skins, animal skins. Yeah. So we see there the first sacrifice that was made. Amen. I told you then, I tell you now. I don't understand it. I don't believe anybody understands it completely. Mm -hmm. But I know this much about it. Sin requires death. Yes. And forgiveness requires the shedding of blood. Amen. Amen. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Meaning forgiveness right. of sin. Amen. 
So God begins showing us in the book of Genesis, even not just about the blood, but even about the virgin birth. Oh, wow. When He would speak to the woman and say, your seed, the serpent will bruise your seed's heel, but your seed's heel will bruise the head wow. of the serpent. Amen. The woman's seed. He will put enmity between the woman's seed and the serpent's seed. Amen. Yeah. Talking about the virgin birth. Amen. So search the Scriptures, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. I don't want, just want you to know the Scripture. I want you to know of whom the Scripture testifies. Oh. I don't just want you to know that there was a tabernacle, but I want you to look and see the man that that tabernacle spoke oh. of. Yeah. I don't want you just to see the different pieces of furniture, but I want you to see beyond that. Beyond that and see what this was a shadow of. I want you to know today that it was not by some weird coincidence that the tabernacle was laid out in the form of a cross. Amen. I want you to see that that is a picture, a type, a shadow of that which was to come. Amen. That which was to be fulfilled. Some 4,000 years later in Jesus Christ as He walked the sandy shores of Galilee and taught and He healed and He delivered people and He cast out devils at the age of 33 and a half stood before Pilate willingly and said, For this cause came I into the world. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. And we see that all the way through the Scriptures. Amen. The blood is the foundation. Without it, anything you build, you build in vain. Right. Without the blood, the lost stay lost. Amen. Without the blood, the hopeless stay hopeless. Without the blood, there is no redemption for mankind. Without the blood of the Lamb, there would be no way whatsoever to get and get God and man back together again to repair the breach that man's sin in the garden did. The Bible says by one man's sin entered into the world. All oh, but there was a second Adam, the Bible says, that came in by one man. Righteousness was once again made available for mankind. Come on, brother. Talking about the blood. Right. The pictures, the types, and the shadows that we see. Amen. Thank God. And this is not something that just happened. Mm -hmm. It's not something that the Lord thought, well, you know, it's a starry night in Bethlehem. We'll just make something happen. I just came up with a good idea, guys. Yeah. I was sitting here not doing it. Anybody ever been sitting around and it's just a good idea strikes you? You think, well, I got a good I got an idea. Yeah. That didn't happen there when Jesus was born. That didn't happen while Jesus was on the earth and God looked down and said, well, you know what? I think i got an idea. I don't know how I'm going to use Him. No, John said the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen? Right. This was a plan put into motion by God. Right. Amen? Before the foundation of the world. Right. To repair that which man had broken. You can't fix it. No matter how much you try, you can't fix it. You can super glue it, but it's still broke. It may be glued together, but it's still broke. It's weaker than it was before. Amen. Amen. You can try to cover it up, but only God can take it away. Amen. 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 Revelations 13 and 8 says, And all that dwell upon the earth mm. shall worship Him whose names are not... whose names are not written... In the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Talking about those who had rejected Jesus will worship the Antichrist, the beast, the, the uh, image or whatever, the, however it is they set up their worship of the Antichrist. All of them will worship Him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. The Lamb that was slain before or from the foundation of the world. Now what I want to tell you this, what I wanted to get to this for, I realize that you have to go back into a little bit more depth of the 13th chapter and before that to get to exactly what he's talking about, how that the beast will come up out of the sea of people, how the Antichrist will come forth and he'll be forced to take a mark or a number and all of that. We're not talking about those, but what I wanted you to hear here is that he talks about the Lamb being slain slain from the foundation of the world. And the next statement that he makes, this is the last time you'll find it in the Word of God. If any man have an ear, yeah. let him hear. Now this is a statement that Jesus used in His ministry several times. You will find this in the Gospels. Jesus would say, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen? Yes. Here we find the very last time in the Word of God that this would be used. 
And it follows this statement. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Tie that with the Scripture that Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious men of that day and said, Search the Scriptures, for it is those that testify of Me. He told them one time before Abraham was, I was. Amen? He said, Abraham rejoiced in My day. He saw My day. So He's telling them then, He's telling us in the book of Revelation, the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. So we're listening to what God's saying. We're seeing what God is showing us in the Old Testament. We moved on from Adam and Eve to their sons, Cain and Abel. Right. And we see the same thing. I believe it's the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis. You find Cain and Abel both bringing offerings to the Lord. Both preparing an altar before the Lord. And Cain, what does he bring? He brings something that he made. God has always tried to show man the best that you have is not good enough. Right. There must be something else. Come on. There must be more. So Cain brings of the work of his hands and God rejects Cain's offering. Yeah. Come on. Because of that. Because of that. Because he didn't do well. Right. But his brother Abel brings of one of the flocks of his herds mm. a blood sacrifice. And he offers it to God and it's accepted. Why? Because it took the blood. It had, there had to be blood. There had to be blood. There had to be bloodshed for the remission of the sin. There had to be death in order for sin to be, the sin debt to be paid. In order for your sin debt to be paid, Brother David, one of two things had to happen. You had to suffer death yourself or somebody had to stand in for you. Somebody else had to take your judgment, your penalty. And Jesus did exactly that. Yes, sir. Amen. God is a just God. Yes. Amen? Yes. He is just. He is righteous. He is holy. Absolutely. In order for you to be forgiven, in order for you to find grace, uh -huh. somebody had to take your place. Yes, sir. Somebody had to say, I will take their punishment. Yes. There had to be a substitute. Come on. We see that all through the Old Testament. Right. With the sacrifices that were made, right. where the priest would take the lamb and the blood of the Lamb and go into the Holy of Holies once a year for the atonement of the sins of Israel, that Lamb was a substitute. Right. Had there not been blood shed, had there not been the death of the Lamb and His blood shed and placed on the altar, judgment would have had to have been poured out on Israel yes, for their sin. Same way with you today. Had it not been for the blood of the Lamb slain, He gave His life on the cross of Calvary, the final authoritative altar for mankind. Yes. Had He not done that, you would have no hope today. There would be no salvation. Someone said anybody could have died on the cross. No. Had to be a lamb. Yeah. Had to be a spotless lamb. Wow. Had to be somebody that was sinless. Right. Know anybody like that? Other than Jesus? No. Some of the crazy big wigs on some of the... I'm not going to give you the network, but y'all can probably guess it. Christian network. Mm -hmm. Say, well, one of the prophets could have died on the cross. They said Jesus had to die in hell and go to hell as a sinner and be born again. No, 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 no. The victory was won on the cross. It wasn't won in hell. Right. Amen. Come on. It wasn't won in hell. It was won on the cross because Jesus, a sinless, perfect man. Right. And God didn't take that sinless. Somebody said, well, God was against human sacrifice. So it couldn't have been that way. You know how it was that way? Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down freely. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Right. Amen. Jesus went willingly. Exactly. He had the power. Absolutely. He laid down his power. Absolutely. And went willingly to the altar, the cross. Went willingly to the cross and laid down his life for us. But it's interesting to me, and you might scratch your head and say, well, don't take much to amuse you. That God would use this place in His Word as the last place that we would hear the words, read the words, if any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. Right after He talks about the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, He's telling us the same thing He told to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He searched the Scriptures. So we found it with Adam and Eve. We found it with Cain and Abel. Of course, we know that Cain got mad and killed his brother Abel. Why? Because he done wrong and God didn't accept it. 
Man still getting frustrated today because God won't accept their broken things. Man still getting frustrated today that God won't let them in because they're good enough. Oh, did you hear what I said? Man still getting frustrated today because they think they're good enough. They don't need God. Yeah. Well, Why does it have to be God's way? Why can't I make a way? That's what they tried to do to the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. They tried to get to God some other way. Yeah. Caused confusion. That's what happened to you. Amen. That's what happened to you. You tried to get there any other way. They, Adam and Eve tried to fix things. Yeah. Cain and Abel, you see a picture of the works of man being rejected and the blood sacrifice being accepted. And we're not going to have to go too far today to find another example that I want us to look at this morning. Genesis, the sixth chapter. And let's see what the Lord has for us there. Genesis, the sixth chapter. And I told you this last week. I tell you again today, there's no way that we can get to all of the pictures and the types and the shadows but we're going to hit some. We're going to hit the ones the Lord leads us to, to go to, and this is where the Lord has us next. Hallelujah. Genesis the sixth chapter, and we will find out that it's God's way or no way. Amen. True. That you will get there, God's way, or you will not get there. Right. And chapter six, as the Lord shows us this perfect example one more time. And he'll show me it over and over and over. You ever told somebody, do I have to draw you a picture? Yeah. Well, God tells us over and over and over. We find the creation of God in Genesis the 6th chapter, the world mired in wickedness and darkness and sin. Right. We find that man's thoughts are on evil continually. Right. That they have made God sorry that He even created them. Sometimes I wonder if that's how He feels now. Yeah. When we have people condoning homosexuality, not just the government, but churches. Yeah. Wow. When we have Christians who think more about their food stamps than they do about voting for somebody that's for the life of the unborn babies. Right. In order to get them upset, all you got to do is tell them that, well, the Republicans or whoever the candidate is, they're going to mess with your food stamps and your welfare and your social security and your retirement. So instead of saying, well, yeah, but what about the unborn babies? Yeah, well, what about the sanctity of marriage? Yeah, well, what about the, the homosexual movement that the Democratic Party had put their stamp of approval on? What about those things? No, well, let's don't even worry about that. They fix to take my food stamps. I'm going to vote Democrat. Amen? Oh. When it means more, when your social security means more to you than your morals, you're in trouble. Right. Amen? Absolutely. Say, Brother Billy, watch out. They'll take your tax exempt. No, we don't have it. And if we had it, they can have it. If it kept us from preaching the truth. Come on, brother. Amen? Preach it. I told Brother Tommy last night, if it caused it, if we had tax exempt status, which we could have, we just didn't apply for it because when we asked about it, they sent us some information. It was a book about this thick. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. Besides that, I just soon not have no more deals with the governments than I have to. Amen. Amen? That's the truth. Right. And you don't need it to be recognized as a church anyway. Yeah. Amen? Come on. But even if we did have it, mm -hmm. if they said, well, we're going to take it away. If you talk about abortion, if you talk about homosexuality, you know what I'd say to them? You can have it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Our tax is in status is not as important to us as what God's Word says. Right. Amen? Amen. Social Security and welfare, and food stamps. As much as I appreciate those things, I'm glad there are people that have those things that, that are not able to work or that can't take care of themselves and all that. I'm not saying, I'm not down in that and growling at you if you got food stamps. Trust me, I was raised on them. Yeah. I got fat on them, amen? Mama raised seven kids, and if it hadn't been for food stamps, we'd probably starve to death, amen? Oh. Daddy ran off with some other woman, was an alcoholic, couldn't shake the booze. We didn't have no choice. Right. Amen? Come on. But welfare, food stamps, and Social Security ain't as important to me today as the unborn babies by the megans that they're slaughtering and calling it the woman's right to choose. Amen. 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 True. How in the world did you get over there, Brother Billy? Because the Bible says in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that God looks down on the earth and the wickedness of man, I'm in verse 5, the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 
and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. Do you hear that? It repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. And it grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. All right. These are the generations of Noah. Mm. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Amen. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was also, also was corrupt before God. Mm. And the earth was filled with violence. My goodness. Mm. I just heard on the news yesterday. I was listening to it. I was talking to someone after I heard the news. They were talking about school, and I said, we homeschool these three. And, you know, it's not easy. It's stressful. Yes. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But I was listening to the news in two different places. They weren't that far from here. You probably know what I'm talking about. One of them, they took one little boy into custody because he had a hit list. Yeah, I'll say that. He had a list of friends he was going to kill. Right. Another one, I'm not sure exactly where this was at either, but there was a boy that took a gun to school and shot some shots in the air and a teacher jumped on him and took the gun away. Right. So when you think about the fact that when you put your babies on the bus in the morning, you might be going and picking them out of coffin that afternoon because somebody shot their head off. Right. True. Then it's not all that much of a pressure to homeschool. Amen. It's not that much of a burden to homeschool. Amen. Education takes a back seat when it comes to safety. Amen. Amen. God puts no premium on ignorance, but He does it on your ignorance either, Mom and Daddy. You need to do more stuff to protect your children. That's the truth. The school system has went to hell in a handbasket. Right. When they kicked God out, they moved the devil in. Yes, sir. Amen. That's, That's why I was excited to hear Paul Ryan this week say he was for prayer and pledge allegiance in school. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. I think the Pledge of Allegiance is great. That ain't as important as prayer, though. Amen? Oh. We need to pledge allegiance to the Lord first Amen. and foremost. Hallelujah. Right. God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted His way upon the earth. Yeah. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come up before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. I'm in verse 13. And behold, I will destroy them from the earth. Then what he, what's He tell Noah, next. He says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Yeah. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. Yeah. Did you hear that? Oh. This is the fashion. God's getting ready to give specific instructions to Noah right. on how to build the ark. You see, judgment was coming. Oh. There would be only one escape, Brother Sleese. And that would be the ark which God would give the instructions for, Brother David. Right. Exact instruction. He would tell him the material to use, the measurements. Absolutely. He would tell him how to pitch it within and pitch it without. He would tell him exactly way, the way he wanted because it was going to be God's way or no way. Amen? Exactly. There was only going to be one way. You couldn't decide, well, I'm going to build my own boat. Mm -hmm. I'll survive this judgment. By fixing my own way, I'll just build something tall enough to where the flood waters won't reach it. Yeah. I'll build my own boat. Listen, what do you think would have happened today if Noah, after he wrote down all the instructions of God, or maybe he had a better memory than I've got and he didn't have to write it down, he just remembered it all exactly the way God put it to him, amen? Right. What do you think if Noah looked at it and said, you know, that gopher wood is more expensive than this pine. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can just cut a corner here. Pitch inside and out? I don't know about that. Maybe I'll change that a little bit. Mm. What do you think would happen had Noah decided to tweak with the instructions that God gave him for the ark? I tell you what would have happened in case you're wondering, it would have floated like a rock. Right. It was going to be God's way and his instructions, or Noah and his family were going to die. Amen. Listen to me. It'll be God's way today. Or you and your family ain't going to make it. Amen? Oh, God has given specific instructions. He has shown us the way time and time again. He has prepared the way. And if you choose to 
reject it. If you think it's not necessary, you are going to perish. That's right, brother. Exactly. He gives Noah specific instructions. He's given us specific instructions. Exactly. And He showed us over and over, all throughout the Old Testament, pictures and types and shadows of the way that He would make for man to once again have fellowship with Him. For man to be able to escape hell's flames and make heaven His home. Amen? There will be only one way and it ain't counting your beads. Guess what? That ain't in here. It ain't confessing to your priest. Guess what? That ain't in here. It ain't bowing on your knees on your rug and kissing the ground toward Mecca. Guess what? It ain't in here. It'll be through Jesus Christ. God's way or you will not make it. Right. It's Amen. the blood way or no way. Amen. You'll come by way of the cross or you won't go, brothers and least. Well, pastor, that sure don't sound very economical. That sure doesn't sound like you're going to get to fellowship with some of the bigger religions of the world. Can you lay aside your differences? Not if it means i got to lay aside the truth. No, sir. I can't lay aside my differences. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. God's Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. God's Lamb spoken of and, and, and given us a type of in the book of Genesis. God's Lamb. That was the picture of the Old Testament tabernacle which pointed to God's Lamb. Him. Not but one way. Not but one way. And God's showing us that here with the ark. He's telling Noah, this is exactly how I want you to make it. There's only going to be one way of escape. It was the ark. The ark was a picture and a type of Jesus. His finished work on the cross of Calvary. Because today, listen to me, judgment's coming. I don't know when it's going to get here. But if you listen close enough in the Spirit, you can hear it coming. Amen. How many times have you ever been outside or maybe you've been out in the woods hunting or maybe you've been out on the lake fishing uh -huh. and you could hear something. There's rain coming from the distance. Uh -huh. Couldn't see it. Yeah. Me and my cousin Timmy Johnson was in a boat on one of these lakes out here on the these stripper pits. And uh -huh. We had got all the way down on the other side of the lake, way away from where we were supposed to get out and get back in the truck. And mm -hmm. I said, you hear that? <laughs> he said, oh, it's just some wind. I said, no, <laughs> ain't no wind. It just kept getting closer and closer until finally it come a gully washer. And the boat motor was dead. And there we trying to paddle it back to shore before we sunk from the water filling up the boat. That's where you're going to find yourself. Amen. If you don't go God's way, there is no other That's way. Right, oh, there's a way that seemeth right to a man. You know where that leads? Death and destruction. Yeah. God's way leads to life. Yes. Noah would build the way. God would give him the specific instructions. The only escape. And he would preach for 120 years. Yeah. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. You know what I think he preached? Repent! Turn back to God! Right. I believe there'd been room on that boat for some other folks. That's it. Amen? You got it. I believe that God allowed him 120 years to build that and to preach that so that maybe somebody would turn from their wickedness yeah. and get on the boat. Amen. But the Bible says they didn't know what happened until it took them away. Until mm -hmm. it came upon them. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And but one way. And that's Jesus Christ. And that, there wasn't but one way out of the flood. Right. That was the ark. And it had to be built specific. The instructions were specific. You could not, you can't go around this thing. Amen. You can't Make a detour and go around the cross and say, well, it doesn't take that. Oh, yes, it does. All the way throughout the Old Testament, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at pictures, types and shadows of things that point to Jesus Christ and the work that He did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Right. You can't fix up or tweak God's way. Amen. Amen. I know that it sounds dogmatic. It sounds hard to preach things like against people counting their beads, right. against penance, against, you know, faith in other gods. <clears throat> Many people today think, well, you know, we'll all have faith. You have faith in your God, I'll have faith in my God. We'll all get right. to the same place in the end. No, it doesn't work like that. Come on. There's one God besides Him. There is no other. You will come His way or you will not come at all. Exactly. Amen. You will take His road to heaven or you will take the other road to hell. Right. Amen. Right. Only other two places. There's no paradise. There's no purgatory. There's no place for you to go to that's, you know, I wasn't good enough to get into heaven, but I wasn't bad enough to go to hell. 
No, that don't work. Come on. That doesn't work. You're, you'll, shame, you'll share the same hell as Hitler. Amen, Brother Billy. Why? I didn't do anything to that grotesque. No, but you rejected God's only way. Right. You rejected the only way God made for you. Amen. Oh, I don't like talking about hell either, but it's real. Amen. Right. We have to. We have to. Amen. I hope you get this today. Yes. I hope if you're out there listening to my radio, you get this. I hope if you're out there watching the video, you get that there's one way, one escape. Jesus and His blood, His finished work. Ain't but one way. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. 6 and 18, Genesis 6 and 18, I'm closing. He speaks to Noah and he says, With thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark. Verse 22 says, And thus did Noah, according to all that the Lord, all that God, excuse me, commanded him, so did he. Amen. Right. Listen to me. You'll come God's way or you won't go at all. Amen. You'll come by way of the blood or you won't go Truth. at all. You'll come through Jesus Christ or you won't Absolutely. go at all. He followed the instructions that the Father gave him exactly. Yes. Talking about Noah. Amen. So did Jesus. Right. He said, for this cause, this is why I came into the world. When he hung there, suspended between heaven and earth and said, it is finished. He was talking about the building of the only way. The bridge that He made yeah. between man and God. Amen. He would restore the fellowship that Adam destroyed in the Garden of Eden with his sin and rebellion. All the blood of the goats and the rams and the lambs of the Old Testament could not make this perfect. But Jesus did. Yes. Jesus did. Amen. So Noah and his family would get on the ark. I'm sure there are some people, maybe out, maybe they were there on the earth and they thought, you know, maybe there is something to what Noah's saying. Yeah. But I, I don't care about going in with him and stuff. I'll try my own thing. Yeah. I'll do something. I'll prepare my family in case this does get bad. Mm -hmm. Amen? Just in case this gets bad, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't one escape then. There ain't but one escape today. The ark then, Jesus today. Amen. And the Bible says in Genesis 7 and 1, the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. The Bible says that God shut him in. God shut the door of the ark. Amen. He said, Come into the ark. Noah and your family. The same way He's saying to you, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Amen? All ye, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water freely. Amen? He said, Noah, come into the ark. Come where it's safe. He's begging you today. You, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Baptist, if you're a Pentecostal, if you're a Jew, He's saying, come into the ark where it's safe. Come through the door. My Son, Jesus, I have made a way for you to escape the pending judgment that's on its way. Yes. And the door was shut. Uh -huh. The door of the ark was shut. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of those virgins over there. Right. Where the Bible says the five that were ready, they went in. Uh -huh. And the door was shut. And the five that wasn't, Brother Sleece, here they came. Come on. Can I get in? Come on. Can, can I get in now? Yeah. Too late. Too late. What do you think those people did as the floodwaters begin to rise? Yeah. They ran to the ark. Yeah. Can I get in? I believe it now. Yeah, but it's too late. Right. God done shut the door and Noah couldn't open it. Really? Amen. What God shuts, no man can open. What God opens, no man can shut. He shut the door of the ark and people were screaming, let me in, let me in. That's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. Amen. They're going to find out one day too late that Jesus really was the only way. They're going to be screaming, please let me in. But it's too late. It's too late. The door was shut. The door was shut. Couldn't get in. Amen. You cannot bypass God's way. That's right. The ark was a picture, a type, a shadow oh, of the great work that Jesus would finish on the cross 
of Calvary. Justification is found in the blood. Salvation is found in the blood. Righteousness is found yes. in the blood. The way today is found in the blood. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 22, without shedding of blood is no remission, no pardon, no deliverance, no forgiveness, no liberty, no remission. Sin required death. Yeah. Forgiveness requires the shedding of blood. And Jesus took both of those penalties for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. I think I'm about done. My goodness. The Bible says in Revelations, write these down, 1 and 5. Revelations 1 and 5. It talks about Jesus being the Prince of the kings of the earth. Yeah. And unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. Talking about Jesus. Revelation 7 and 9. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. And all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. If you'll drop down five verses to verse 14, John is asking, Who are these people and where did they come from? that are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night. The Bible says that these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. The life is in the blood. Ain't but one way to have life today, that's through the blood. Ain't but one way to have forgiveness today, and that's through the blood. Not but one way to have redemption today, and that's through the blood. You'll get on God's ark or you'll die drowning in your own sin. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. The blood. It's all through the blood. He's given us the instructions. He's given us everything we need. He's done it. Say, so, well, why? I can't serve a God that would send somebody to hell. God's done everything but force you through the gate of heaven. He's given everything that He had. He's made it as simple. So simple. Even a child can understand it. Right. Simply put your faith in Him and what He's done. Come on. Amen. Come on, say it. Through the blood. Only through the blood. Praise Someone else this morning have something before we go?